Hello, my name is Taylor Ross. I'm an Eximetry ambassador and the owner of Frustum Virtual in Los Angeles, California. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Eximetry camera calibrator to calibrate your camera and lens for virtual production. First thing we need to do is get the camera calibration board if you don't have it already. You can get this directly from Eximetry.com. Select the Learn tab at the top. In this search, I'll type in Calibrator. If you're looking for the Camera Calibrator tab, Camera Calibrator, we're going to scroll down the calibration board. You can download these two images using this link. You can also purchase this board directly from Eximetry. You need to email sales at Eximetry.com and they will send you an Eximetry calibration board in the mail. The resolution and scale of these images is much larger than what a normal household printer can handle, so you'll need to go to a third party to print them. Next, I'm going to open the camera calibrator. This is something that ships with the broadcast version of Eximetry DE, but you can also purchase this as a standalone application if you don't own a broadcast license. Just make sure that you're opening the camera calibrator and not the basic calibrator. That's a different process that we will cover in a later tutorial. The first thing we will see is the Eximetry camera calibrator startup configuration. On the left side, we have video outputs and device mapper. In the video outputs tab, you'll see that I have video output devices. I have two desktop monitors connected directly to my graphics card and one SDI output. If you need to change the resolution or frame rate, you can click these three dots. You'll see a list of resolutions and frame rates that are available in the Eximetry camera calibrator. Finally, you want to make sure that the index is correct. I have my secondary monitor set to index 1 and my SDI output set to index 2. Next, we will navigate to the device mapper. On the left hand side, you'll see all of the available devices in this category section. Select camera tracking and then select manage devices. If we scroll down, you'll see all of the camera tracking devices that are available. Under game, OpenVR is HTC Vive, and anti-latency is the anti-latency system. Pretty much any camera tracking system that you may be using is available in this list. I'm using the anti-latency system, so I will select anti-latency. For use device, I will select the device that I am using on this system. I will then select apply and OK. This will make sure that the camera calibrator is using anti-latency for my camera tracking. You can also set up a preset from this device mapper menu. This preset will be loaded on startup, but you can also change this in the program while it's running. For now, I'll leave all the presets blank so that you can see how it can be set up once the program is running. Once you're happy with all of these settings, you can just hit apply and then start. This is what the camera calibrator looks like once it starts. On the left hand side, we will see calibration profiles. I have one lens that's already been calibrated. To add a new lens, you'll navigate to the add button down here at the bottom left. Type in the name of the lens as well as the name of the camera. This will help you keep things organized when you open up Eximetry DE Composer. Later in Eximetry DE Composer, you will be able to select any calibration profile that you have set up in Eximetry Camera Calibrator. I will also add a version number just in case I want to make more than one profile with the same lens. Once you are happy with the naming convention, you can just select OK. Now on the left hand side, under calibration profiles, you'll see the calibration profile that we just created. You will also see the live video input coming directly from your camera. For this first setting, the sensor width, I will use this drop down and then scroll through to find my camera. I'm using the Red Epic W8K, but since I'm not using the full sensor and it's cropping it, I will leave this custom. By leaving this setting on custom, Eximetry Camera Calibrator will calculate the sensor width for me. Now in the upper right hand corner, you will see tracking devices. I have my game anti-latency device zero, but under this dropdown, you can select whatever tracking device you're using. If you set up a preset at the beginning of this tutorial, it would be under mapped one. The zoom devices is where all of your lens encoding information will be coming from. I'm using the Lonet 2. Lens encoding calibration is handled by the basic calibrator, not by the camera calibrator. So we will do that in another tutorial. If you don't see a live input coming from your camera, that's the video input. You can select mapped one if you've mapped a preset. Mine is Blackmagic Decklink AK Pro. For the video mode, there's a lot of resolutions. I know that my camera is sending a 1080 24 signal, but since I already have video coming in, I'm just going to leave this on auto. Now that everything is set up, I'm going to select calibrate lens. There are two different types of calibration available through the camera calibrator. One is fixed and one is adjustable. Adjustable is for zoom lenses and fixed is for prime lenses. This is a prime lens, so I'll select fixed. First, you'll need to set the field of view. This mainly applies to zoom lenses. You'll want to set your zoom lens to the widest focal length. Since this is a prime lens, I don't need to set my field of view. So I will go ahead and just select next in the upper right hand corner. The next page will tell us how to get the Eximetry calibration board if we don't already have it. I covered this at the beginning of the tutorial. 
We already have our calibration board set up, so I will just select next. Heximetry recommends using a secondary monitor as a control monitor. You just want to make sure that this monitor is not in the view of your camera while you're calibrating. Now Heximetry camera calibrator is going to guide us through the process of calibrating our lens. In the lower left hand corner you should see a sample photo provided by Heximetry. In the lower right hand corner you should see your camera's live input. Everything here looks correct, so I will just select next. You want to be able to set your T or f-stop as high as possible on your lens so that everything is in focus. So you need to put a lot of light on the board. I'm at an f8 right now. Once you have a lot of light on the board, you'll go ahead and press next. On the left hand side, you'll see a sharpness meter. This will change depending on how in focus the board is. If I quickly adjust my focus point, you will see that that sharpness meter will drop into a red or yellow. You want this to be green. Make sure that the sharpness meter stays in the green zone because you will not be changing the focus as you go through this calibration process. Once you have your focus set and the sharpness meter is green, you will see a top-down diagram in the lower right-hand corner. This will guide you where to place your camera in physical space. You want to place the camera in the gray zone. The arrows in this diagram should help you place your camera in the correct position. Throughout this process, you will also see arrows on screen telling you which way to pan or tilt your camera to get the calibration board in the proper position. Once your camera is placed in the proper position, you will see a green dialog at the top of Eximetry Camera Calibrator. This dialog is reminding us to set our focus to the board. Make sure to not change the focus after this point during calibration. So I have my T-stop at an eight and my board is in focus. The sharpness meter is green. I'm gonna go ahead and press next. This will capture the first photo in our calibration process. You'll see in the lower right hand corner, the diagram has updated with a new gray zone. We need to move our camera into this zone. Once the camera is placed in the proper position, you should see a green dialog that says you've placed the camera in the correct position, fasten it, and press next when you're ready. This should capture your second photo and update your diagram in the lower right hand corner. I will go ahead and move my camera again into the gray zone. Pan and tilt my camera into the proper position so it sees the board. We will get another green dialog once we are in the proper position. Now that you've seen a few samples of how Eximetry handles the calibration process, I will go ahead and edit out all of the gaps where I'm moving my camera and just show you each of the photos that the Eximetry camera calibrator will be using to calibrate your camera and lens. Once you have successfully captured all of the photos for the lens calibration, you will be able to move on to the calibration of the tracking. For tracking calibration, the process is almost exactly the same. You will just place the calibration board on the floor. I will select Calibrate Tracking. The Eximetry Camera Calibrator will prompt you to place the board on the floor and make it so that you can move around the front edge in 160 degrees. It should also be noted that the center point of the calibration board will also be the zero point of your camera tracking volume. Since I am using the anti-latency floor tracking volume, I will be placing the calibration board in the center of my floor, but you can place the board wherever you would like the zero position of your tracking volume to live. Once you've placed the camera calibration board in the proper position, you can select next. During this calibration process, don't change the field of view. You'll also want to make sure that the board doesn't move from its position on the floor. You will see a sample photo in the lower left hand corner and what your camera sees in the lower right hand corner. Go ahead and select next. Make sure that the board is well lit and press next. Now we will use the diagram in the lower right hand corner to place the camera back into the gray zone. Once again, we will set our focus to the board and make sure that this doesn't change throughout the entire calibration process. The sharpness meter on the left should be green. The diagram in the lower right hand corner should have our camera in the gray zone and the board should be on the floor. Go ahead and select next. This will take our first photo. 
And now, just like before, we will follow the prompts on screen to place our camera in the proper position and take the photos of the calibration board. I will now speed up this process by editing to all of the individual photos that the Eximetry camera calibrator will take to calibrate our tracking. Now that the calibration is complete, we can go ahead and select test calibration. You'll see that the zero point of our camera tracking volume is represented by this marker. It is in the center of our calibration board. On the left hand side, we can adjust the video tracking and zoom delay. I know that my camera tracking volume has a delay of about three frames. We can now pan and tilt the camera around the studio to test the calibration of our tracking volume. The main thing that we are looking for here is that there's no significant sliding or drifting within the tracking data. If there was any significant sliding or drifting in the tracking data, you would see that these markers would slide or move from the position that they are set currently. It's easiest to see this with our main marker that is set to the center of our calibration board. The slight stutter that you see in the video here is nothing to worry about. It will not be noticeable when you're using it in Eximetry DE. Just make sure that the marker that you see here always ends up back in the center of the calibration board and you should be good to go. Now we can navigate to the upper left hand corner and select back to configuration. This calibration profile is now saved and you will be able to use it in Eximetry DE. We can now close the Eximetry camera calibrator. It is recommended that you go through this process and calibrate every single lens that you will be using on your physical production. Hopefully this video was helpful in getting you started using the Eximetry camera calibrator. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.